Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're gonna hang out in the shop for a while today. I'm gonna be a fabricator and an assembler. I talked to Mitch, he says he's happy just to hang out and work the cameras, so we got teamwork happening here. The last video, remember these guys? These were the push rod, rod tubes. These here are the push rods and you can see how they sort of twist a bit they, because they go from being across the frame this way to in line with the frame up at the head. So these tubes are about 3 16 inch too long or something like that. There was a gap there. It's not there anymore because I don't have a tube in there. So look, I have a drawing. I made a drawing yesterday. I have metal. This piece is inch and a half OD at 60.61. This is $19. That's what metal costs these days, including tax. So we're gonna go over to the lathe and we're gonna machine up a pushrod tube and then I'll take off the cylinder head. We'll put the tube in and hopefully we can, we can talk it down and this engine will be basically assembled. That would be great. I never, th I thought it was gonna be a two part series. Wrong. This is part three. Thanks for sticking it out and hanging out. Let's go to the lathe. <laughs> I have to machine this and it's about six inches long. And so what I'm gonna use, this is a live center. Can you see there's a bearing in there? This is live center as opposed to a dead center. There is a thing called a dead center. It has no bearing. It just is. I was using old scotch Bright. This is new, this is a little bit coarser. So this is worn, but it makes a nicer finish. And even after that, you, you can see little, little marks in the 6061. I'm not sure why that is. I was at Metal Mart yesterday and they checked on it and they said, hold on, because we've been having some problems with 6061. And I don't know if the grade was soft or something, but see all those little marks in there? That's not what it's supposed to look like. So anyway.
it's supposed to be 900. So it's 901, so we're good. What I need to do now is to cut the taper. Because on the push rods, if you looked at the motor, do you see how they came up at an angle like that? So you need a lot of a lot of clearance at the top. See that? It's got a taper in the end, allows for the push rod room. So, and the transition is not bad. I'll live with it. Okay, let's go to the hacksaw. So that's what it's looking like now. This shoulder got made a lot smaller. So let's let's go to the vise. I'll hold this really carefully and we'll make a mark. Here I'm gonna put put my red red sharpie felt pen on there right now. See I've got an o-ring that goes on each end, so these have to be squished a little bit. So for these two o-rings I've allowed a 50 thou squish which is a little less than a sixteenth of an inch so I was estimating I was guessing we'll see how that works out so this that's the size right there I can machine up to that almost and then I can take it out and I can measure once again but this is going to give me a pretty good indication of how close I am I was watching YouTube last night. I was watching Alan Milliard. He uses a black Sharpie. We're obviously different people. I prefer red. Now I go from fabricator to assembler. I wanted to show you, can you see here? Can you see, I'll hold them up. Can you see how much longer this, this one is on top? It's about, it's close to a quarter inch longer. There you go, angling up. It's a lot longer. So I hope I got this right. Here's the O-rings that go on. It's the whitish one, off-white goes on top. And can you see how there's a little shoulder there? But I didn't make it too long because I have to have to look inside and see how the push rods are doing, how they're mating up with the rockers. And then this is the bottom one. And I got a little larger shoulder here because it goes down inside the case. So we're gonna take off the cylinder head we're going to put in the push rod tube and hope. 
I got a wrench off of Peter. Thank you, Peter. He gave me some other sockets and stuff. He's not using them anymore. And it's a uh, 5 16 Whitworth and it was ground down on the edge. Can you see how, can you see how slim that is? It fits right in. So I spent a little time yesterday and I, I polished it and I, I took off the lump right there on, it, on each side. So thank you, Peter. The wrench is getting used. See here how it just fits in there. Can you, can you see that? There's, there's no extra room. If it wasn't ground, it wouldn't fit. So very handy wrench for this engine. There we go. So here comes off the head. Whoa. There we go. There's the push rods. So let's see what happens here. Oh. Look at that. So anyway, I'll tell you what happened. I guess I have to put it back in the lathe and machine it a little bit. I didn't want to do that. See, I put this in, this goes in like that. And look, look what I did yesterday. I go, oh, it's got quite a bit of clearance there. So I can make this a little bit larger. Well, apparently, even though I did that, I guess maybe at the bottom it narrows down because that does not want to go in there. Maybe it, maybe it's this step. Well, I don't know. Anyway, we've got to do some stuff. Let's, let's check the top here. See if the top fits. I thought that might happen. See how it's, because I got, I got the taper there. I think what I might have to do is just take a little bit off the, well, it's just a little, it needs a few thou taken off. Okay, Mitch, we have to go back to the lathe. I'm sorry about that. Maybe what I need is an arbor. You think I need an arbor? Make up, make up an arbor? How long can that take? Got a little bit of grease here because aluminum likes to seize onto a steel shaft. So be a real shame to put it on there and then not be able to get it out because it galled. Well, I didn't anticipate this. This is... Oh well, it's just what happens when you make stuff. Things don't always work out. That's a good fit. That should be enough to hold it. Wow. I, well, no, it's going. I tapped it on with a, a plastic hammer. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see, it's a little snug. Here we go. Oh, look, look at that. There's a little bit of play there. But that fits well on the top it's not fitting so what we need to do is to take a little a little grinder and grind that up i've got everything masked off i just have to mask off this hole here and then it doesn't matter because um, i'll put some masking tape over these two
Okay, this is assembly now. So, see what happens. There we go. It looks like that one's in, so let's look at the other one then. There's just not a lot of room. You have to kind of guess. Oh, I think that went in. Kind of lined up. Okay, I can see that the, the gasket is getting a squish on it now. So finally, see these rocking? That's, that's valve overlap. So, okay. This is the aftermarket rocker feed made by Webco in California, I believe. Acorn nuts we made. That's a nice snap-on. I think someone was asking about this. It's a, a quarter inch drive T-handle with an extension. And then there's an, an adapter to go up to three eighths. And it's just, I mean, it's got some flex, but it's kind of a nice, I like it. It's a nice little tool. So I like nice stuff. Maybe you've noticed. That's our show for today. Thank you. Mitch and I like coffees. If you buy us some, that'd be much appreciated. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe. I'm glad this is basically done. See you next time. Thanks for hanging out in the shop. Take care.